Guangzhou Venture. Uh, this is day two in China, actually. We're right in front of my hotel, right over here. Across the street, you see a ton of food stalls right here that my friend recommended me to last night. So we're gonna go across the street, see if we can grab some grub. So food stall number one, this is Dan Tat, right over here. You can see egg tarts. And I believe they're freshly made with a bunch of different bread right here. I'm just gonna go take a closer look. A bunch of different like cookies, pastries, buns. Looks amazing, but we're gonna move on. I can get this in Vancouver anytime. Probably not at this quality, but still. I think what we're gonna do is probably walk to the end of this block, right over there. And then we're gonna circle back and then basically make a U-turn. So we'll film a whole bunch of stuff here, see what we can find. Another cool restaurant. Uh, I don't even know what this place is. Someone tell me, it's a restaurant. Looks like there's some spicy food. Ah, convenience store. Actually, I'm gonna walk in here. Uh, we went to, just popped into this drugstore. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to help me with face moisturizer, so we're gonna have to go to the next location. Let's check it out. Thank you. Bye. stall looks like. That's amazing. Tiny how. Wow, look at that. I'm gonna stop here. So we're getting in another pastry shop. Looks like Chinese cookies this time. Um, I think these are mooncakes actually, if I'm not mistaken. I think these are Kai Mei Bao and Ju Pa Bao. Looks good. Some of, the, sorry, some of their Pastries that look really good. Actual donuts like Don Pot. We're gonna keep walking down this street. So we turn left and we're gonna see what's out there. It's my first time vlogging. It's actually a little bit difficult to do this and kind of concentrate on the shot and kind of do this find fascinating things around the city while you're at it. I can see why like Mark Wayans, well obviously has like 13 million subscribers, but you know, he has like a camera crew behind him because I feel like you can actually react a lot better that way, certain things and narrate certain things. And then your cameraman will just take like A roll and B roll. But you know, first world problems. Wander by something super interesting. Look at this like I don't know if you're familiar if you're from Vancouver, but we have Fenton. And like, there's just a legion of people over here getting ready for orders. And I wanna say like, maybe this is the headquarters? That's why they're all congregating over here. They all have their delivery boxes and they're ready to go out like, I don't know, any minute now. Got like electric scooters, bicycles, uh, electric bikes, mopeds, everything. A lot of fruit stands I've seen over here, which is really cool actually. I don't even know what this is. Oh, it looks like a noodle house. Wow, this is amazing. Hi, Niha. Check this out. This is like done for you on the spot too. It's like pure protein. Wow. Whew. Okay, so back in my hotel room. I got a coconut bun. Um, I actually don't know the official name in Cantonese. So I'll show you this in the bag, but let me show you this. Going to do a taste test for you all. And I got some strawberry milk. Now, I've never actually had strawberry milk myself, I don't think, in my lifetime. I don't even know if this is real milk. My mom told me that it's not, so <laughs> we'll see what it's actually made out of. I asked her to get a cold one. This, surprisingly, was more than the bun. This was four bucks, and the bun was three dollars. Three RMB, not dollars. So let's take a bite of the bun first and see where that takes us, okay? Bottoms up. Let's try it. 
Mmm. Really fresh. You can tell it was baked day of. It's not like overnight stuff, which I think is probably the standard for most bakeries. They basically have to liquidate all of their stuff. It's things to say about this bun. Coconut flavor for sure present. When you bite into it, you see the bounce. It's a leavening. Look at that. Bouncing back into place. Crazy. It's not too heavy on um, the butter or any fattening agents. And it's just the right amount of sweetness. Really not a ton of sugar. Actually, the ones back home are probably a lot more sugary than this. I was expecting coconut filling in here, but there isn't. And I kind of enjoy that, actually. That's a terrible shot. Uh, I kind of enjoy that. Usually it's like filled in right here with coconut. It's not. Um, and it's different. You see that there are some caramelizations right here with the sugar. I think they probably just use um, some maybe brown sugar and caramelize it. Or maybe it's white sugar, I don't know, or powdered sugar. Um, but it's pretty light, um, I'm pretty surprised. Okay, onto the strawberry milk, let's try this. So here it is, I didn't shake it well. Okay, first impressions, definitely not milk. <laughs> Uh, very, very strawberry, uh, strawberry in almost a pretty artificial way. Um, like it's, it's almost like an injection of strawberry syrup in this. Wasn't the biggest fan. Uh, but then again, I'm not a huge, it's, it's called strawberry yogurt drink. I don't know if that's true, but let's try it again. Okay. So I can taste a little bit of the yogurt of it. Um, I don't know if you've ever had those, uh, I think it's Korean. They're like the little yogurt drinks that are about like this tall with like a red kind of like um, film wrapping on the top that you just peel off. That's a lot stronger than this, but you can taste the tanginess of the yogurt. Uh, but other than that, you know, uh, it's okay. Uh, I've, I'm not a huge um, sweets kind of drinker like I, I really try to wean off uh sugar in my coffee over the last couple of years i've been pretty diligent about that same with my tea but yeah that's my breakfast for today went pretty lean on that uh yeah hey everyone so we went to the first noodle place they sold out of something uh it's unfortunate they always sold out and then or sell out They've been there probably for 60 years, and as a result, we're actually at the second place right now to see what they've got. Uh, you can see the name up here, right here. Uh, that's what it looks like. So let's go check it out and see if we can get some grub. So you're down at this noodle house right now. We just ordered at the front. I have no idea what we ordered. Kylie actually ordered. So we'll see. We're gonna be surprised. I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. She was mentioning that the hot sauce is a custom brew of hot sauce, which uh, I don't even know if I can take, but we'll check it out. And let's take a look at the rest of the restaurant here. It's, oh, it's literally just a hole in the wall, but I mean, these are probably the best places to eat that the locals actually eat. Adventure. We're in another place across the street. It's massive. Uh, we're gonna find, follow Kylie because uh, I think we're gonna get lost and die. So you can see they're making like uh, shrimp dumplings here. Shrimp dumplings. Yes. Amazing. Yes. We're on the second floor right now. Yeah, but it, it's like, this is like a Gudong Lake. This is a Gudong Lake. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, it's a Qingmusti King. Like, 
the end of the Qing uh, dynasty. This, this entire mural right here. Look at that. Look at that. History. Our history. Look at that. Look at the amount of people that are waiting on the steps. How long do you think the wait is? I don't know, forever. So we went from the elevator that was down there, came all the way here past the dining room. There's a private dining room right here. And we go into the balcony with the street and we see this, this crazy balcony that you can just see like the epicness of it all. Okay, I thought it would be a little busier than that, sorry. Maybe it's just the time of day, but you can kind of tell like just a hundred years ago, people were peering over this balcony just like I am right now having tea, you know, it's literally a place for people to smoke and have cigarettes and have some tea together. You got all the way down there, that's crazy. If you guys take a look at this, this is beautiful. Just chill. incredible, so chill. We could like literally grab a coffee and just sit here. And there's like a little garden here. There's no stairs down here, but you know, it's like a little private area. Obviously that's the street that we were just on. And if you look around here, man, they, they must've had like council meetings, business dealings down here. <laughs> like 120 years ago, they were like negotiating terms for like territories and like tariffs, reparations. This is crazy, like, can we sit? <sighs> Unreal. 48 hours ago, I was in Vancouver. Well, maybe more than that with the time zone change, but uh, now we're here. Um, and this is one of the oldest restaurants in Guangzhou. Predates, when was my grandma born? Like 1907, I think, something like that. Even predates her, just incredible. And it's still vibrant and full. It's not like a business that's collapsed over time or anything like that. Like there's people lining up out the door outside trying to get to here. So I hope to be able to dine here maybe once before I leave or one of the restaurants. I think that'd be cool. But uh, yeah, super excited. This is, uh, this is amazing that Kylie took me here. So we're up at the top floor. I think this is it, fifth floor. We could drink coffee here. We could get coffee here. This. Obviously it doesn't look like much because they're doing renovations, but man, this space just stretches all the way through. So we're gonna go for a little tour. Furniture. There is, I think they're probably making another private dining room over here. It just, there's like a veranda up there. I wonder who lives there or if anyone. Man, it'd be crazy to live up there. Just oversee this whole operations. That's like the, Pagoda that we saw. This is a private dining room where they're served all the way up here. People have to come with like elevators and stuff, which is crazy. It's like a table of like six. Incredible. And then you can see all the way stretched over here. I think this is all Old Town. And man, this is like the street that we're on just now. So we came from here, went to that restaurant, yeah. crossed the street to come here. So we gotta go this way now to explore more. But uh, yeah, you got restaurant number one, and then restaurant number two that I'm sitting in right now. Restaurant number three was last night that was 100 plus years old. Something like that. <laughs> this is the map, I like, uh, I don't know, the map from Qing Dynasty. Wow. Of this area. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, of, uh, everywhere that we've seen, basically, this is like the old map. We are here, right at that dot. That's crazy. 
almost appeared. Right. Yeah, all many family, they own the whole building. Wow. It's super old. I'm sure it's like a hundred years old. Uh, over a hundred years. Over a hundred years old. Yes. And now it's empty. Because yeah, her had belonged to the government. Oh, okay. So it's turned back to the government. Yeah. This so is fried yogurt. I have no idea what this is. I've never seen it in my life. It honestly looks like some kind of ice cream or custard yeah. to me, but the consistency is different. They're all different flavors. I got strawberry, matcha, durian, passion, passion fruit, fruit. Here it goes. Let's give it a shot. I'm sweating bullets. Which one do you want? Twenty RMB. It's like four three fifty. I think for five cubes. Not too sweet. Pretty good. Not a ton of matcha flavor. To be honest. How's yours, Kylie? Any strawberry? Is it no. gross? <laughs> no. There's no strawberry. Nothing. Really? Yeah. Just like. Milk, mm -hmm. banana. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's a little bit strange because you know, yeah. Which one do you want to try? Watermelon. What do we got? Passion fruit, watermelon. What's that? Ha um, honeydew, winter melon. No, nothing. It's pretty good. Mm. She's not eating it because the durian piece literally just grazed. The watermelon, like literally, like, like. Doot. I can, I can smell that. There's right? even a gap. You can see. No, this. There's a gap right here. I don't close. think they even touched. No, they already become and, a friend. And so I no. told her to eat this half, that half, and she no. refused. <laughs> no. She refused. What a waste. This is the jasmine cold brew. Never had anything like this in my life. Let's take a look. There's actual jasmine leaves on top. And you can see the coloration is so different, right? But my friend recommended that I stir it really well before we drink it, so here we go. So you can see it's changing, blending. Huh, I actually kind of like it. Yeah, yeah it's, very, uh, it's very different. Quite refreshing. Yeah. This river stretches all the way down here. Linked to the same river that we saw last night. Going up to the balcony, the second floor. Upstairs. Well, let's see. Really open area. Actually, not that much up here. Seems feels kind of barren with just like the table seating. You can see all the way at the end there. And right out here, pretty chill actually. Wow. We are in a ping pong for the Tao. And there's a menu, all in Chinese. I can't read it. So we're gonna see what it is. I'm pretty tired. I think Kyle's pretty tired, so this is the last stop, but excited. Let's see what there is. I got a double boiled milk with red bean on top. This is the double boiled milk with red bean on top. It's cold. Just gonna show you what this is. And then I'm gonna try it. See my reaction. And oh, that's a beautiful. And then you can see this double boiled milk. It's not something that I would make at home, so that's why I was excited. Let's see. Yeah. Could use, could do without the red bean, I think. We're talking about toppings for yeah. this double boiled milk. Well, you can have One of them's red bean. Oh, can put yeah. mangoes. Yeah. Oh, that would be really good. Yeah. Um, mm, I'm gonna enjoy this. Yeah. The map of Ching of this area. Yeah. Look at that. 
This is pretty cool.